Hello, in this video we are going to talk about the transport layer protocol, specifically about TCP implementation as a client. In our previous videos we discussed about HTTP, different HTTP versions and the implementation of TCP server. In this video, we will use the previous video for the TCP server and talk about TCP client. All our program will be written in the ESPIDF 5.0 environment. And we will uh, show the implementation of POST command from one controller to the other control controller via Wi-Fi. What we basically will have is two ESP32 boards where one is a client, the other is server. We will connect only a voltage and ground between them in order to have a, a, a power supply. And uh, the connection between those two boards will be via Wi-Fi. After, we will open a socket, continuous socket, between them. Okay, so, so our purpose is to open socket and to perform a POST command in the TCP uh, protocol. Another remark before we go forward is why we do this video with the two boards. It will be much easier to show it with a TCP client, this is our purpose, and to perform a POST command, say, to the PC. But uh, when we're practically trying to do it, uh, these different sites on the internet are mostly implemented in HTTPS secure protocol. For sake of simplicity, we are using only HTTP without a secure layer. We have also the videos regarding HTTPS, but here we are starting from the basics. And this will... Uh, so, so we'll have to implement some kind of program and build server on PC, which complicate things even more. So we are Ba on the basis of our previous video, we will use the server on the other ESP32 board. Okay, now regarding our sources. In the expressive side, we have a lightweight uh, TCP IP stack, LWIP. This is the library that we are using. And here the explanation is very brief. But as we pointed out, the examples are pretty good. So I do suggest you to look over them. Uh, and also they have a list of different functions that we use, like uh, socket, uh, bind, send, and so on. Okay. You can uh, see it uh, here. Uh, what we did is started from this TCP client example, you can see it here. This is a classical example from uh, ESPIDF uh, GitHub repository. And here you can see three different files, the main file, the v4 file, and v6 file for different implementations. We will concentrate only on v4, and we will suggest a code with only one file which is very, very simple, much more simpler than this, uh, to implement this just to see the basic structure and to understand the basic concepts. So our program is saved in the Sims IoT Devices repository. And we can see different repositories here. When we are talking about socket repository, as you can see in our previous videos, in the first video we talked about we talked about HTTP, and then regarding the 
TCP socket server implementation. In this video, we are going to talk about TCP client implementation. So our code is TCP socket client. We'll take this code and paste it in our edit in our new project in our editor. Okay, this is the code and it's pretty brief. It's like uh, 130 lines and uh, before we are go, go forward I will just talk about uh, four basic principles here we are using the standard include libraries which are common for all this uh, video series in sake of simplicity are the same includes we define the port and uh, and define our tag here and this is our payload so we have only one function which implements the TCP client for only v4 uh, connection here we will define our IP we'll talk later how we will find this IP and how we can uh, define it and here we have two functions the Wi-Fi handler and Wi-Fi connections which were explained in our previous videos which enables us to implement the Wi-Fi connection from the ESP32 where our main basically establish uh, the Wi-Fi connection wait for it to take place and then implement the TCP client so we have in our project here in VS Code uh, this code which we have past pasted here and it's called uh, proj3 in this case but we will start from proj2 from our previous video code which is also here in the tcp socket server okay and first we will define our server so i'm connecting uh, the usb port to the server ESP32 and now I am I am sending this code TCP socket server for proj2 okay a no I didn't connect it it's sorry okay let's try it now okay our purpose here is to establish a server, a server and also to understand how the server is defined on the on the internet on the IP network. From this code we will see the given IP and we can derive the name of the server. Please note that this is the IP of the server. Okay? I will copy it. Now I am using advanced IP scanner. You can use any IP software that you want. And we want to see which which what is the name of the computer with this IP. Okay, now he's looking for the appropriate IP. Okay, so we have here expressive uh, dash two dot lan this is the name of the computer which have this server we'll copy this name okay now i'm uh, moving forward i will stop it and we will go to our client first of all i will touch the client I will connect the uh, client and the server together and connect our USB port to the client board. So now we are using this code client. We will go to appropriate directory.
and we will flash the code to the client. Okay, this code is now flashed to the uh, to the client uh, board, and our guess is the IP will not change. But of course, we will check it before that. Okay, got IP. This is an IP of our client, and as you can see, it's working correctly. But just to finish the point, here we can uh, paste the name of the computer and we see that the IP allocation wasn't changed. So on the same IP, the server has the same, same IP. So our definition of the dynamic IP that were used was correct. If uh, it will be changed you can update it in your code uh, rec uh, according to your definition on your computer so what's going on here we are sending sen uh, sending a post response from the client and have the response from the server and Let's see what server is sending us. I will jump to the project to the server code and here the uh, server is sending us this line response from ESP32 server via socket connection. Okay. You can see here the 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 screen that client is actually see and he sees the response from ESP server via socket connection this line after printing this printing this response we can see also the flow of the connection on the client what you can see here is a TCP socket socket created first and now now uh, diving in inside the TCP client function itself First, we have to establish the socket connection and after it, we will write socket created. That's what you have here. The next step is to connect the new socket and we'll write successfully connected. Here, uh, here you, you will see that we are connecting to the given IP and port. The IP was given here and the port was given here and after this connection we will write that the connection was successfully established and the, the next next step we will send a payload this payload is defined this payload is defined here we will sending some payload to the server and here we will receive the response and print the response on the screen received a, an exact number of bytes and it's very important to have this number exact because uh, it causes some prob problems if you just reserve additional number of bytes and not not null, null terminated it but here you see the working implementation and also print this uh, on the screen uh, and we have it in HTTP 1.1 which was described in our first video. So to summarize it, I will just stop it. Okay, what we have seen here is an example of connection of two boards via Wi-Fi when on one board the TCP server was flashed on the other board the TCP client was flashed they established by Wi-Fi the socket connection between them and uh, uh, exchanged messages uh, from the client to the server and back thank you